Hey, what's going on guys? Just wanted to give you a quick video on how to study the unit circle without memorization. For those of you who have studied the unit circle or are studying the unit circle or will be studying the unit circle, you will find similarities of points around the circle. Really, if you notice, if you just really study the first quadrant, it pretty much matches the rest of the quadrant as long as you know your signs of each quadrant. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay. So here we have our unit circle. Okay, so like I said, all we're going to do is really just focus on the first quadrant. So again, as I mentioned before, if you know what the first quadrant is, you pretty much know the rest. That's why I say we're going to actually look at the unit circle without memorization. Because here's what we're looking at, and I want you to follow along with these signs here. So we already know with quadrant one, we have positive, positive, correct? Quadrant two, we have negative, positive. So that's a negative x, positive y. Quadrant three, we have negative, negative, which means negative x, negative y. And for quadrant four, we have negative, I'm sorry, positive x, but negative y. Okay, so take a look at these because these actually matter. They do, and I want you to check this out. So look at this and look at this. You notice how quadrant one is the opposite of quadrant three. And just like two and four, two is the opposite of quadrant four. Okay? So I want you to take a look at those. Those do matter. So going back to the point of just knowing the first quadrant, because again, I'm just looking at the first quadrant. I'm only thinking about the first quadrant. I'm just going to memorize that part because if I know the first quadrant, I know the rest of the quadrants when it comes to the points. Okay, so let's start here. We know that the points here, these are easy to know. These are real easy. We know that when it comes to your uh, unit circle, the radius we know is one. Okay, so starting here, I just have simply zero, I'm sorry, one and zero. Here, I have zero and one. Okay. Here, I have negative 1 and 0, and here, I have 0 and negative 1, okay? Those points are easy, I'm pretty sure, to memorize or remember. I'm not going to really say memorize here. I'm trying my best not to say memorize, okay? So, we can start with that, because so, again, the radius of your unit circle is 1, okay? Now, here are your other points. So, I'm going, okay, that's my 45, that's my 30, there's 60, okay? We know what this point is. Square root of 3 over 2, 1 half, okay. Square root of 2 over 2 for both. And I'm thinking for the angle of 45, that point is probably um, the easiest to perhaps remember, okay, because they both are the same, okay. That's the reason why. Now I want you to actually check and see the patterns in the points. Now, how you see how you go from 1, then square root of 3 over 2. Oh, I didn't mean to do that, it's not negative. All right, but you're going to like square root of 3 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 1 half down to 0, and that's on the x side, so it's counting down, okay? And then with on the y axis, you're going from 0 to 1 half, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3 over 2 to 1, okay? So with this 1 right here, and I want you to kind of check this out. So you can kind of look at it as square root of 4 over 2. And we know the square root of 4 is simply 2. What is 2 over 2? Well, it just goes back to 1. Okay? So it's like saying square root of 4 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 1 over 2, square root of 0 over 2. Okay? So you can kind of see the pattern of the x points there. And it's pretty much the same with the y points counting up. So you're going from 0 to 1, 2, Three, and then square root of 4 over 2, which of course just goes back to 1 again, and you see how that looks, okay? So again, it's about noticing the pattern, not necessarily memorizing the process, because if you practice it enough, memorization becomes almost obsolete. So now you know how to basically just write out the process, okay? But again, 
I'm looking at the unit circle. I'm only going to memorize. If I'm going to memorize anything, I'm only going to memorize the first quadrant. That's it. Because here's the pattern to that. So again, I'm looking at my signs. Again, we know quadrant one is simply positive, positive, right? That's positive X, positive Y. I'm going to look at quadrant two, which is a negative X, positive Y. Because as you already know, when it comes to your unit circle, basically all your points are the same. Just slight variations. So if I actually go from, let's say, here to here, and I'll do the same thing to all of these, and I'll show you. So now, what is this point? Well, again, negative x, positive y, but the same exact point. Negative 1 half, positive square root of 3 over 2. Same thing here. Negative square root of 2 over 2, okay, and square root of 2 over 2. So again, negative x, positive y. Same thing here. So it mirrors this uh, point here. Simply this now. Whoops, there we go. Same thing. You see? All right, that's quadrant two. Well, what's quadrant three? Oh, wait. Let me go by this sign, which is negative x, negative y. So again, with my uh, divisions there, and I could literally just copy my point. I don't have to memorize anything. So again, if it looks just like this point, okay, then I can simply do, okay, again, negative, 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 square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half, like so. Same thing for my 45 degree, negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. Same thing here, just like this point here, okay. Same exact point, just slight variation, negative one half, negative square root of three over two. Okay, and continuing on, just to finish that out, I have, I have a quadrant four, and you already know what these points look like. Okay, you know what they look like. So I'll start here, since I could write it better here, again, this is positive x, negative y, okay? Ah, let me take this off so we can have some more space. Again, negative y. And then, of course, your last point here, and I'll write it out here since I took some space over there. Here, we're going to have, what is that? One half, right? Because again, positive x, negative y, like so. Again, this is quadrant four. Okay, with positive x, negative y. Okay, and you see what each point looks like. Okay, so again, if I know quadrant one, I know the rest of the quadrants without any memorization at all. And notice how now you're looking at these two points. Again, this is positive, positive. This is positive, negative. Okay, because that's quadrant four. Now quadrant four. Okay. And again, I can go from here and I can jump across. Right. So again, for quadrant three, this is negative, negative. Right. And I go up here to the same point. Negative, positive, because that's what my quadrant two is. But you see how my points all match each other and even on the opposite ends okay now I use blue this time so look at this point and look at that point positive positive negative negative but they're exact same point how about here and here okay all right positive positive I have a positive one half positive uh, square root of three over two right here I go down negative 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 one half all right, negative square root of 3 over 2. So you see, and I do the same thing here. So I'm kind of draw the line solid so you can really see it. So here and here. Then I have here, whoops, here and here. And then I have here and here. Okay? Same thing here. I'm going to have this point and this point. Okay? And of course, right across the aisle, I have this point and this point. Okay. 
and again right across the aisle I'm going to have this point and that point okay I know it's not exactly you know centered but you get the point you get the point and just to kind of see these you see how these line up okay these line up okay sorry that line is kind of off sorry about that you see that okay So again, if I know the first quadrant, I know the rest of the quadrants point-wise. The only quadrant I'm memorizing is that first quadrant. That's all I'm memorizing. This is the only part I'm concerned with right here. That's it. That's it. So to try to memorize the entire unit circle, that may be a little bit more to ask of anyone. But if you study it long enough, it becomes easy. However, let's pretty much chop it up into chunks. If I know the first quadrant point wise, I know the second quadrant, I know the third quadrant, I know the fourth quadrant by simply doing mirror images of the points. That's it. The only thing I have to watch out for are the signs. That's all I have to look out for are the signs. That's it. So going back really quick, just to recap really quick. Again, quadrant one, I have my signs of positive, positive. Quadrant two, I have negative, positive. Quadrant three, I have negative, negative. Quadrant four, I have positive, negative. Okay. And as long as I know these points here in quadrant one right here. All right. I know the rest. OK, so if you're working with trig trigonometry functions and you're working with the unit circle, just memorize the first quadrant. If you know the first quadrant, you're good as gold, because all you have to do is simply rewrite the rest of the quadrants with the same exact points. Just make sure you keep a uh, be mindful of your signs. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. All right. Hopefully that helped out. All right, but in the meantime, practice, 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 study, study, study. Y'all stay safe out there. Y'all be good.